You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Dean Johnson. After Buzz TV. After Buzz TV. The After Buzz Studios in Los Angeles, California. Presented by Maria Menunos and Bing.com and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is After Buzz TV's The Hero After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post game wrap up show for your favorite TV show. It's After Buzz TV's The Hero After Show. <laughs> What's up, After Buzzers? You are tuned in to the After Buzz Show for Heroes. Season one, episode two. We're just in the beginning phases of learning the heroes here. Now what and happened? What the? <laughs> music gets cut off. We, we were jamming the oh heroes. Oh, my God. Bond. But I am your host, Spicy Muddy, keeping it sizzling up in here with executive producer and fabulous host, Hero Fan himself. Feel across from me. What's now you call there? the show Heroes. We have multiple <laughs> heroes now, but we are only searching for the hero. The hero. Stephen, our engineer is not my hero today. I'm gonna. It's 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 all you two, man. It's <laughs> blame it on anything you want, Stephen. I'll blame it on the goose. America votes on the hero. I do not. <laughs> so you're lucky there. Continue on, spicy. I feel like there was several heroes this episode but at the same time there can only be like you said one hero the hero as the rock would say and who is america going to choose as the hero we don't know yet but so far the theme of this challenge this week was communication navigation and teamwork and the first challenge that the team had to do was one picking who goes and who stays i feel like that's always the hardest part I think it was made easier by the fact that now the three that were left behind last time have to now go into it. So, you know, you would think like, okay, oh, that's kind of a sort of a handicap where we don't get to choose the team. But really, by having less choices, it actually frees it up a little bit. And it does make people take accountability and step up to the plate. Exactly. Which so. they might be step stepping down more <laughs> if, you know, they could. They would be staying at home if they could. Yeah. Um, and I like the uh, the continuing battle between Sean and Marty. Because <laughs> right off the bat, it was like, okay, well, who's going to go? Dude, I got to go. Right. I got to go. The, and then the muscles. Two muscle heads, yeah. But I, I think that it's cool that we have both of them because we have one who's like super about himself, which is Marty. And then we have Sean who's just super crazy wanting to prove himself 24-7. He's willing to die in order to, you know, fulfill a challenge and finish. So I think I mean, it's who says that dynamics. I'm willing to die? I like him. I actually am starting to like Marty. He's very extra, but I like that, though. I know. I, I, I like him, too, it, but it's uh, it's certainly not normal behavior. I didn't think I was going to, though, because I thought maybe he was a little whiny, but I think he really is just that passionate about the challenges. I think he really just wants to prove something to himself. He hasn't talked about the money so much. It's more just about been about challenging himself and doing it for the team. And you know what? Uh, uh, we'll certainly talk about it a little bit later, but with Athena, I really like her kind of notion this week of like you 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 know we were kind of judging these guys last time and things like that and how, how do you really know any of these people we don't and so now as we are getting to know them like uh you for example are liking marty a little bit more i like marty too and and uh charles i'm liking him a little bit more. so we're getting to know these guys and so you're feeling athena more this week no i'm not i'm just saying the point that she made oh okay you know um uh, but david for me continues to be um Someone strong-minded. Oh, uh, yeah. I like him. Uh, you know, I think uh, Patty, despite her weaknesses, so to speak, <laughs> I like, you know, I think she continues to, to be strong-willed. I think Patty is a nice lady. Um, I'm getting a little bit uh, frustrated when contestants on the show are saying that they're not doing this, you know, so much for the team or they want to enter a challenge to prove to themselves to prove to themselves. And I think that that's a little bit selfish. I understand having a personal goal, but I feel like it should always be the strongest contenders who are going to win at all times. And I don't think Patty is the strongest contender. I also feel like Athena, although she really wanted to prove herself this time, she called to herself or referred to herself as the stupid cheerleader. 
I haven't heard anybody make any comments like that. So I think that's her own personal insecurity that she deals with on a daily basis that she's bringing to the hero show as opposed to just showing us your strength. She's constantly reminding us that, you know, I'm not the I'm not the little girl that you think or I'm strong. You know, let me prove it. Let me prove it. But I don't feel like she's done anything to episode to benefit the team at all. Uh, you know, and certainly Rachel will back you up on that. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I can't, you know, could she have done a little bit better? Yes. Um, you know, but it's tough to say. I mean, you, you give it to Darnell and, and uh, Charles who had walkie talkies and then basically you have these two girls, their walkies are taken away. So you never quite know. I mean, but, um, y you know. We'll see. We'll see as it develops. So this first challenge, they're on a scavenger hunt in Panama, and they're running around, and all of a sudden they get a— they're, everyone's finishing one by one. We got Darnell and Charles, who winds up uh, getting pretty far, and they're just waiting on the girls now. And Patty's trying to lead them in a helicopter with Marty to— Excuse me. Hilo. Uh, Hilo. <laughs> That's the cool, uh, the rock word for a helicopter. For those of you who don't know, Hilo is short for helicopter. And so uh, Patty thinks she's doing her part by motioning and signaling the girls, which I understand, you know, she conquered her fear getting what's up again uh, on a high helicopter. Although I don't feel like her goal or her contribution was as challenging. But we see the girls all of a sudden get a notification that they now have twice as far to run to the finish line because somebody has been offered the money by The Rock and accepted it. Now, let me ask you this. Uh, out of, you know, it's, it's tough to say this because we never really got, like, a map. You know how they always kind of do that? Mm -hmm. I wonder whose was the toughest in terms of matching. You know what I mean? Obviously, it was... It, I don't know whether it was luck of the draw or whatever, how they were handed their cards uh -huh. to match to. But... Um, you know, I wonder, was Darnell's and Charles's that much easier, in fact? Cause, I mean, Darnell, uh, basically, right. it'd be like me turning left and being like, oh, there's my building. <laughs> That's what it seemed like. But obviously, I don't I don't think that was necessarily the case. So I wonder whose was actually, more challenging. Yeah. Yeah. In that respect. It could it could have been. I know that there was some language barriers going on. Uh, Athena had nothing to contribute. I guess she doesn't know a lick of Spanish. And we could tell that in her. Uh, <laughs> confession when she's mispronouncing uh, everything, but uh, Rachel was pretty strong. She yeah. said she was carrying Athena the entire way. And you know what? Athena had to go, so, um, you know, you kind of have to give her the benefit of the doubt in that sense because, you know, she had to go on this challenge versus the other people. So, you know, uh, can you hold it against her? I don't know. I don't think necessarily can. So do you feel as if uh, communication was displayed on this challenge between the teams? I think uh, I think by the actual ground team itself, yes. Um, and you know what? Rachel can say what she wants about Athena, but there's only three photos to go off of. You know, you have the girl who can't speak. You know what? As long as she's staying with you, who cares? Just let her follow. And you know what? Tell her, like, hey, I'm going to ask these people. You just keep looking around. <laughs> <laughs> but she even admitted she wasn't doing anything. She's like, I feel like, you know, pretty weak right now in this challenge. But that's, you know, uh, if, if Rachel, here's the thing. If Rachel really wants to be the hero, step up and give her that task. Mm. And so then you vice, feel like she should have challenged her. Yeah, and, and the vice versa, I guess, Athena should step up in her own right and say, you know what, I, I may not be able to do this. I may not be able to speak Spanish, but you, I'll, I'll follow you every step of the way you ask. And again, I will identify as we go along and, and be that person for you. And what about navigation? That was something that maybe you would leave uh, to Patty and Marty. Do you think that navigation was displayed in this challenge? Uh, with those guys, I mean, uh, they did well for what they had. To, I mean, here's the thing. Once, once the walkie-talkies came into place, I mean... How hard is it to say, like, go to the water or follow <laughs> us? You know, where, but, you know, I, I think the bulk of the navigation came from, okay, we got to identify this building. It mm -hmm. wasn't really about the finding the helicopter. At that point, see, oh, there's a the helicopter. Right. You know. So you think the navigation was more like the, cl the clues trying to find the yeah. picture display. And teamwork. Was teamwork displayed on this challenge? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> Why was teamwork not displayed? Well, what I, I you know, um, it was interesting because Darnell was the, the first one to be offered the money, and he didn't take him. And, you know, we, I thought, you know, it could end there. But the fact that now you had the two, two sides, the people who stayed at home and the team itself, and then that became a point of contention. And then what I, I don't know if it was The Rock or who did it, but the fact that, you know, everyone started turning on each other within that team right. itself of like, wait, 
which one of you was actually tempted because I know you took it. <laughs> so, for you know, they, they weren't even thinking about the home team yet. Right. Well, I thought that it was very big of Charles to step up when it was time to move on to the next challenge. And he was like, OK, guys, we need to choose three people. Let's not focus on the money and who took it. Let's just work as a team and get together. And I thought that was very big of him to step up and kind of redirect everybody's energy. Yeah. So there's there, there showed a little bit of leadership right there and teamwork also. But speaking of teams, what we really need is after buzzers to be a team to us and yeah. also support us like a team member would with Adventures of Serial Buddies, which is a pretty cool, funny, extremely hilarious uh, and just quirky film that After Buzz has produced, created by uh, CEO Maria Menounos and written by Kevin Undergaro and directed. And it is a phenomenal movie that is kind of like, um, like I mentioned before, Dexter meets Dumb and Dumber, except for it's even more crazier and more funnier. <laughs> I mean, just listen to the music for a second. You got burps, you got craziness. This is from the soundtrack. This is, it is yeah, I'm going to have to bump this in my car while or like at the gym while I'm working out. <laughs> and you know what the funny part would be? <laughs> I would love to see you do that <laughs> rolling down the street and I want video of this because I bet some guys gonna look at you and be like is she farting? Right, what, what is that? What is that craziness <laughs> going on? But very very funny movie. Uh, it's got Henry Winkler, Beth Bears before she was in Two Broke Girls, Kathy Lee Gifford, Artie Lang, Christopher Lloyd from Back to the Future, Christopher McDonald from Happy Gilmore. Uh, the list goes on and on and uh, and of course Maria Menounos. Right and we would love for you guys to uh, be a team player and support us by purchasing. You can can go to SerialBuddies.com or you can go to iTunes and purchase the film. But it's super crazy funny and it's a great gift too. Father's Day is coming up. Buy dad a gift for Father's Day. That's Serial Buddies. Watch it at home with him. But it's something that'll go down in history. So you guys want to get it now. Exactly. And, and in return here, we got some guests line up from the show. So very exciting. Um, I'll announce that we got Lydia next week and then I, uh, the 27th, I believe, Charles is coming in. And I know Marty. We're working on Marty as well. And so we'll have more and more guests. And, uh, you know, for the price of basically a Happy Meal, you have a movie. Exactly. And us. And you keep our lights on here at After Buzz and help keep the cameras going. That's right. <laughs> so that we can do shows like The Hero. But since uh, we are talking about heroes, let's talk about who wasn't a hero. And Marty was not a hero this episode, I have to say. You didn't think Marty was here? I did not think that. I'm what? sorry. I'm sorry. Not Marty. I'm talking about Sean. I was going to say. I, was gonna say, well, <laughs> I know. I like Marty's episode. I'm talking about Sean. I'm sorry. Well, I want to break this down. The, 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 let's start with Darnell for the fact that he didn't take it. You know, it I want to focus on the two reasons. Okay. Let's talk about Darnell. So Darnell first. didn't take the money because he was specifically in the challenge and he felt, you know, too closely tied into it. Correct. Now, then you have Sean, vice versa. He's like, my teammates will do good no matter what. Does he really believe that, though? Did, was that how he kind of uh, made, yeah, just made his conscience feel a little bit better so that he can sleep at night? I feel like, I mean, truthfully, I would say, you know, he really wanted to know how far it would set them back. And the fact that he didn't know, I think um, if he was really genuine about it, I, would, I think he would have said no. If he knew the repercussions. Well, if he knew the repercussions, then, you know, um, I think he would say yes, because he would at that point, he would have to make a very big judgment call. Right. This was, you know, kind of a shot in the dark. And uh, since he didn't know it, you know, it's going to like, what do you think it's going to be like? They're going to take off a second. He almost screwed up the challenge last episode. So for him to feel as if it's not that hard, my team will overcome. I felt like was very selfish of him. But I can't say that if I was in that same position that I would turn down the money either. That's a really hard choice to make. And at the end of the day, that's almost half of a year's income, maybe. And so if, you know, it's between, a, you know, adding a couple minutes onto the challenge and him possibly walking home with, you know, 35000 he obviously doesn't have confidence in himself with winning. And so that's his backup plan, taking home that money. Yeah, well, he's certainly taking it home. And you know what? I will say, despite everything, uh, you know, you would think that he, at least audience-wise, I don't know, uh, we can talk about the cast members, but um, audience-wise, I don't think he came off as bad or as mean as intended. At least to me, you know, I mean, uh, uh, by the way, you guys listening at home, write in, let us know what you guys think about Sean's decision, but I don't think it was as bad or it didn't come off as bad as I thought it would. His choice, I, I actually yeah. felt like he gave a very compelling 
heartwarming speech uh, when he had an opportunity to explain to everybody why he took the money. I know everybody came home really upset and, you know, was bagging on him. But I, I really feel as if that was a really challenging decision. But I also think that it changes the tone of the show as for the members. I think it makes it 20 times harder to reject the money now when you kind of know somebody has already, like, cast the first stone or did the first sin. It makes it a lot easier, and uh, you, you you can, you know, feel better about yourself if you do it. The only thing I disagree with, with Sean was, you know, he said, I waited till everyone got back. And obviously, they kind of did a lot of creative editing, you know, leading up towards it. But And so perhaps he did. But uh, I, I, I felt like he should have just said something right off the bat, especially mm -hmm. to Rachel. Rachel was fuming. Hi. You know, and so at that point, just be like, hey, you know what? I want to give my full reason when everyone's here, but I want you to know right now that, that it was me. And I apologize, but it was me. So could he be considered a hero since he was honest? That's a part of being a hero is honesty. Yes. I, uh, again, I, I, I think so. Maybe not to the cast members, but remember, the cast members aren't voting. So, you know. It's them that votes. And so they voted... So it comes time now for um, Athena and Darnell and uh, who was the third person? Marty. Marty to go up there. And, muscles. Just and call him Muscles. Muscles, that's muscles his, and That's D. his nickname. <laughs> Is, am I only a criticism for this entire show and unfortunately falls on the rock? Rock. There's, you know, we're getting to learn these people. He, he's already given them nicknames. We can't always keep up. <laughs> call him Muscles. Call him D. Call him, you know, just just. Just keep, stick to their names. That's the only criticism. What? I like the nicknames. I think it's I funny. I like the nicknames, but then it gets confusing. Like, wait, which one's my, you know? Right, exactly. How am I supposed to, come on. <laughs> You're like, I'm trying to keep up. So the, th the three of them are up there, and they're standing up there, and they get to give their little speech of why they want to do the challenge. Once again, I'm disappointed at Athena's speech. Oh, I want something to prove to myself. I think her speech was whack. <laughs> I thought that Darnell gave, eh, his was okay. I honestly felt like Marty gave the best speech because I'm someone who I'm more compelled when I feel people's, like, energy, and I'm dramatic, so I like drama. And so the fact that he just said he would lay his life down on the line for the team, I felt like was very compelling. But at the end, he still didn't get it. It went to Darnell. I think here's the thing. I think he, he scares too many. He's Especially with that, he's so high strung that he's he, just, high strung. he just, you know, you hear a sentence like that, you get a little nervous. But that's the person who is promising you that they will bring that many home. And Marty's proven himself before. Unlike Sean, who has, you know, done really bad at a challenge, Marty's done great at a challenge. And so not only is he, you know, proven himself, but he also is, he's excited, like, to do the I challenges. Know, but, you know, you, you, you kind of have to be like, okay, you know what? We got to save this guy. You know, I mean, this, this guy, I mean, God forbid anything. Look at what happened to Darnell. You know what I mean? He's, Marty, he's, again, I feel him on that, but he's, to, to an extent, he's a thrill seeker. Yeah. So, you know, to an extent, uh, it's just, it almost becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Like, what is this guy going to put I, himself through just to do it? But isn't that what it feels like? It, it feels like almost like he's being, like, just that over the top and eccentric, like, for the thrills and the chase, but not so much... The I don't feel like he hasn't mentioned the money. Like he's not like oh I want to be the hero at the end. I don't even think he cares about what he looks like to us as Americans at home that are watching. That he looks a yeah. little crazy. I think he's just really like that over the top. And I agree, but it's unfortunately with his teammates it's working against them. Well, one thing that I do appreciate is Lydia addressing the fact that uh, she was happy that Sean kept it real. She was yeah. like, this is what I've been trying to warn you guys about it from the beginning. And one thing that I did was I kind of slammed her a little bit first episode saying like, oh, I can't believe, you know, she would take the money. Like, I know that's a hard decision, but she's so open with it. Uh, but this is what she was forewarning us about. She was like, as long as you guys keep it real, she was like, I can respect your decision. So I appreciate that, you know, Lydia, although she wasn't on the episode that much today, that she still addressed the fact that, haha, this is exactly what I predicted would happen. Somebody's going to take the money. Yeah, um, I agree with that. You know, the thing that David feels for me the the most slighted because he stuck up for Sean. Oh, they didn't even show us back that, though. Like, David didn't address that later. He didn't. He didn't. You're right. Or maybe they didn't put that footage in there, but he did. He stuck up for Sean. He was like, no, he's been with me the entire time. 
And Sean, I feel like, would have allowed the lie to continue had they not hammered him. Yeah. He would have just let it go. I don't think that he ever had a choice or ever had his mind made up that he was going to address it. But I think that once they put him on the spot and they were like, well, did anybody contact you? Maybe The Rock didn't show up, but did anybody contact you? And he's like, damn, I can't keep on with this lie. Yeah. You know what's interesting? It'd be funny if um, people kind of started going against David of like, dude, you backed him up. How are we supposed to trust you? Oh, like what if you're like going to take half of the money when you guys get home or something? What if you guys made a deal? Not even that, you know, of it could be that, you know. But, but I think David was clueless. So that's so he was innocent because he really was clueless. But how are you supposed to trust a clueless man? You know what I mean? Like you could just be like, hey, you know what? For all I know, he was most of the time with me. He went to the bathroom, though. So I don't know. Maybe maybe he got a call in the bathroom. I don't know. But. If I had to bet my money on it, I would say you didn't do it, you know. And but again, but never but even just put the, your eggs in one basket and say no. Yeah, exactly. But even with like whatever, you, you know, Sean, you can't say with definitive that uh, he didn't do it. Exactly. Yeah, good point. That's true. What about the the Rock speech though? I mean, I you know, I really liked his uh, speech about success and failure and, and things like that. Well. I thought it was kind of cool that Marty, or I don't know if it, it was uh, manipulative, but I thought that it was kind of cool that, I'm sorry, uh, Sean had addressed um, The Rock when he was in uh, Canada and he got cut from the team. And so I felt like he kind of was trying to compel like The Rock, like, look, forgiveness, like I'm in the same boat as you were. Although he said, although I used to be in a bad situation, I'm not as much anymore, <laughs> but I still took the money. And so I felt like The Rock kind of related to him on that. And uh, at the same time made... Sean look a little bit better in his speech with, you know, why he took the money. I would, I mean, I would love to ask The Rock the question of that, you know, if he, if he would have done it, you know what I mean? Because I, I feel like The Rock, despite everything, uh, you know, I mean, someone offers you something, but, you know, I think, I think the greats rise above that, you know what I mean? Uh, I've met a lot of people that have taken, you know, a few hundred bucks here, a few hundred bucks here for the short end goal. And then, you know what, there's people that have never taken it and that have risen so far, you know, to, to the level of, let's say, The Rock, you know, maybe a little bit lower, because obviously The Rock's really, really exceptional. <laughs> um, but, and then the, ultimately the people that took the money along the way, you know, now are to a degree, in, 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 especially in this business, never to be seen or heard from again. Mm. You know, so because they were just... integrity. It's more about integrity and later on being able to fulfill your goals without uh, having been persuaded or coerced. Yeah. But at the end of the day, this is a, ch a game where you're be going to be challenged and offered money. Like, you're, everybody wants to take home money. Nobody is denying that they want to win the prize at the very end. Some have the opportunity to win it sooner than others. Yeah. And if there was a chance that nobody would find out, not even America, I bet you the response would be completely different as to who's taking the money or not. Yeah. If it was in secret and we did not get to see who was taking the money, they would be every single person on the show would have been took the thirty five dollars or twenty five or fifty thousand that the rock offers them. Yeah. Shoot, what was I gonna say? Um It would be funny, and this would totally shoot uh Sean in the foot if he said, you know what? Right after Rock's speech about success and failure, you know, failure makes us all grow. And Sean would be like, see, that's what I was doing. What's making us all grow? <laughs> that, that would completely negate everything. Because what did he say? People, uh, Teams that keep winning and winning never get any better. Yes. Or something along those lines, right? Yeah. So that's why, yeah, that would have been hilarious if Sean was like, see, guys. <laughs> <laughs> but they wind up sending Darnell, to my surprise, Marty's speech wasn't good enough, I guess. They wind up sending Darnell on the Hero Challenge. And Darnell is... Uh, cutting it pretty close because the minutes have decreased now from the previous challenges that have been backed up, correct? correct? And so now he's given less time to fulfill his, and he's put inside, well, first he has to run across a factory, <laughs> and then he's put in, in grab a sledgehammer or something and tie and his goggle. shoe. It, yeah, and tying his <laughs> shoe, it was, it, was, it was just comedic. That was for his kids at home. Yeah. That had to have been. So he like runs back and hops inside it. What would that be? I don't know what that circle, that huge. It's a dam. It's a dam. Well, it's um, it's a dam slash. You know, that's. Well, the technical. I, I guess it's a dry dock. Okay, because I wouldn't. I'm. I have no clue what that is. Never been around one. And I felt bad that Darnell had to swim through that. By the time he got back, uh, I, he was I, chugging was there water. Sewage in there. Why was it so dark? I, well, it's it's the water from uh, from the sea or whatever. Ugh, yuck. Because there was trash in there, too. <laughs> All kinds of trash. And so we had to swim through that, get to the box, break every door down with the sledgehammer, 
and then swim back, get the wrench, and then unscrew it from each side as well. That was the hardest part, the, the screwing. Um, and you know what? The only criticism I have, and, and again, Darnell did everything he could. I would have gotten on the box. You would have gotten on top. Yeah. So you like it on top. <laughs> Just joking. Just joking, guys. No comment. <laughs> um, so Phil said he would get on top in order to screw. And if... <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying, I don't know about Black laugh, Aquaman. I have to laugh at that again. <laughs> Black Aquaman, you know what? I give you some... What do you call him? Black Aquaman? Black Aquaman. Black Aquaman. Black Aquaman. Like Black Aquaman, Aquaman mushed together. Yeah, leave Black it to Aquaman. The Rock to come up with something uh, crazy and witty like that. And that 10 seconds before sharks. And it, uh, mind you, the, t the clock is ticking and The Rock is like encouraging him and pumping him up and cheering him on. But at the same time, kind of like clowning him. But Darnell can't really hear it, but we hear it at home. Yeah. And it sounded good. Like, I really appreciate that The Rock is over there, you know, rooting him on. Because I think that that helps when you have somebody in your corner. But it's, li it's also, uh, I don't know what it would do to me psychologically when the last line is, um, all right, and uh, if you're in trouble, just scream and I'll, I'll get 911. <laughs> I'll call 911 for you. You know they had like a paramedic or EMT or of course, something on but, call. But, but just that fact alone, like I'll call 911. I'll call 911. I'll yell 911. But Darnell winds up not being able to complete the challenge in enough time. In addition, hurting himself in the head, he comes down on the wrench way too quick and bops himself in the head. And he said he got like a little dizzy while he was down there. I don't know about you. I mean, I don't know if you got whiplash, but when you get whiplash, that sucks. And you can recover from it pretty fast which he did but when you see that yeah uh, just it messes you up mentally Eesh. well he had a big like just welt on the front yeah, of his head that looked so painful it looked like it was, was like a cartoon <laughs> you know i mean that was literally it happened and then right and so he w i don't know if you, he would consider that having slowed him down at all either but he almost finished the challenge like i felt like he was so close but you were right he should have gone on top of the box in order to unscrew all of those cuz he just needed well he just needed leverage i mean he was how do you you know he was in the water trying to do it and it, it just wasn't that right strategy but i get it i mean you know i, I can't fault him in any way and it's sometimes harder, like, when you're actually in it. Yeah, I mean, it's so easy for me watching at home yelling at him, <laughs> like, get on the box. But just, like, uh, that's just, like, sports. We're at home, like, I wish they would do this, or why don't they do this? But it really is hard when you're out there. And so The Rock tells him, of course, he didn't complete the challenge. But then he tries to, like, comfort him afterwards, like, oh, but you're a father, so you're still a hero to your kids. But I know in that moment, Darnell was like, damn, I wish I would have taken that 35000 so that, because he, he didn't even get the 50000 to put to the main pot. Red Cross isn't getting anything because they didn't complete the challenge earlier either. Does he either. just want to strangle Sean? I'm sure everybody wants to kill Sean right now. Well, here's the thing, right? We, we, we skipped one part, and uh, it ties back into ni nicely because, you know, um, Darnell's now gone through three different things. He didn't take the money. Okay. He had to, he had to haul, pardon my French, haul ass, uh, you know, pushing this damn truck while while Athena's just basically driving it. I mean, what that's 13 was Athena blocks. doing... All she did was just have the car in neutral pushing it and, <laughs> and cheering people on. I feel like that was not heroic. Here's the thing. If, if she's a cheerleader, she should have done a better job cheerleading. <laughs> I'm going to criticize her for that. Call me out, <laughs> Athena. Call me out. Um, but, you know, I mean, those guys, uh, uh, him and Marty, you know, just what they went through. I mean, I thought it was just eight blocks in eight minutes. It ended up being around 13 blocks that they had to get through, and, you know, obviously they failed. So you fail at that challenge. Um, but you give it your all and now you're doing this another challenge right. and you're already against the clock on that one and to go you know he wants to strangle Sean failure after failure well in the rocks case you know or in the rocks words is that's that's the only way that you get better is you know you have to go through failure in order to I guess appreciate winning or get to a level where you're better in order to win so hopefully next week you know they they will be able to step up but I feel like people now it's going to be a ripple effect people are going to start taking the money more and more because they're scared about potentially missing the opportunity and also not being the hero yeah uh, it's going to be interesting. Uh, there's going to be some sort of final twist to all of this, and I'm excited to see what that is. Okay, so that's that's shot. Because the, the, here's the thing: there has to be one ultimate final temptation. I mean, and it, I don't think it could be this, but imagine if it was like, all right, now you have the choice to either um, take half of whatever the pot ends up being mm -hmm. and walk away completely, 
or potentially win all of it, you know, when American votes you. Yikes. You know what I mean? Like something, something it's big is going to be there. Yeah, I totally feel that too. Phil, would you take the money though? Would you take the 35000 I mean, I can't say I couldn't. It could go I towards mean, the studio. It, you know, it could. I mean, here's, <laughs> I can't say, I mean, here, if past experience is to indicate anything, I've, I've never really been one for money. And, uh, you know, for me, it's always been any, any endeavor I've always done for me, it's, um, I make money in order to make a great product. I don't make a great product in order to make money. And so I don't know. I can't say with 100% certainty that I wouldn't take the money, but I've never really been one for that. And I, yeah. I feel like everybody has their price. And so you say that now with 35000 being out on the now. table. But I feel like had the offer to Darnell had not been 35000 and maybe fifty to 75000 he yeah, we gotta not, get a bidding war. Yeah, it, I totally feel like it would be a completely different answer, and everybody re, would everybody would be reevaluating. But I just I think everybody has their price. I know I do. Well, <laughs> but here's the thing: you may, you bring up an interesting point. Imagine if in those moments, you know, let's say let's take Darnell, thirty five thousand dollars, and he's saying no, right? Mm -hmm. Let's move up to forty five. Maybe it's a no, and the rock just continues. You know what? I let's go up to that. six, and you take it up to let's say we yes. cap it out off at seventy. But you know what I mean? Now it just it gets tougher ugh. and tougher to turn. Because then, because when, because as it increases, there's so much more that you can do for your family and for yourself with that. No. And you're almost uh, kind of a fool not to take it when it starts to increase. And I hope he does try a few people with that increasing. You know the pot. And then you know, and then and then at that point, it, psychologically, you know, the fact that now it's mul it, it, a temptation becomes multiple temptations, and it's like the rock taunting you, like, right? Are you dumb? <laughs> I'm gonna raise it, right? And you better take it. Well, what if Darnell would have won this challenge, the fifty thousand? You, you know, what? you think I, he would have taken it or not? Ah, uh, I think ultimately no, but he did make a good point of, you know what, this is. Last time I didn't take the money because it would screw the whole team. Now it's not about teamwork. It's not about communication. It's about, not about navigation. It's about opening this damn box and getting that $50,000. Ain't nobody say I got to bring it back. Ooh. <laughs> so. so he might he might have uh, kept it for himself. Yeah. I, I completely agree with and that. And then, you know, I, I, and he had the perfect alibi. I got screwed with the time. And see, he could totally do that. And I, I'm waiting for someone to do that because, like I said, 50000 is a lot more than 35000 It's almost twice as much. Not so much, but almost there. And it just it makes a whole hell of a lot of difference the more you go up. And he has kids at home, too. So he have, anybody should have taken it. But he didn't. And I know he's kicking himself in the butt for it, especially since he lost that next challenge. Yeah. But um, do you want to do After Buzz predictions? Let's do predictions. And now, your After Buzz TV prediction. prediction. Well, I'll predict Lydia's going to be here. Yay! To so Lydia. She's we, so we cute. have that, and uh, again, we'll have other people. Uh, you know, they, they never give us away anything, but um, it seems like, as you predicted, that things, people are turning on each other. And, yeah. and you know, it's a, one domino goes, they all go, and they all, you know, The Rock made a very good point. Uh, like him or not, he's going to be in the challenge next week for Sean. Right, exactly. And everyone's going to stay no matter what. They can take all the money that they want, but they're still going to be in the game right up until the end when America votes. Dang, and that makes it so much harder to turn down the money when you know you don't have to go home. You get to stay yeah. and still compete. But I predict that sweet old innocent, you know, grandmammy Patty is going to take the money next challenge. I feel I feel like at some point along the line she's going to realize that she's proved enough to herself <laughs> with her uh, her fear of heights and that she probably is not going to win the jackpot at the end and can do a lot, you know, with that. I just think that a lot of people are going to start to obviously show that they're hypocrites. Yeah. And she's going to be one of them. I have a feeling that Patty is going to surprise us all and that she's not the sweet old lady that we think she is. I, you know, I, I would agree with you because, um, you know, realistically, I have to look at it of like, okay, even if, let's say, I don't take the money along the way, would, would I feel, I, th I think it would, she would take it in this way. Would I feel comfortable becoming um, the hero if America voted for me? And the answer is no, because I didn't really step up in, in a full capacity mm -hmm. in the sense of how America really wants me to step up. I might have stepped up for myself, and right. that's noble, not taking any away from that. 
But if you really want to be the hero, you want to be whatever, you have to go now the next step and impress America, not right. just yourself. And that's that would be in the challenges, right? Correct. And that's, you know, for the most part, it seems like kind of, uh, you know, right now, overall, everyone's kind of doing it. I mean, Sean, Sean's the only one. I mean, Sean hasn't impressed me in the challenges. You know, I mean, if, if, if you're to argue anything, I would say David, Charles, Darnell, and Marty are kind of the four to really step up. You know, and obviously we'll we'll perhaps see the um, maybe the other girls, whether Lydia, whether Rachel, whether uh, Athena, step up in, in that full capacity. Yeah, I think we do need to see more of the women stepping up. So hopefully Lydia can address that when she comes uh, next week, if we're going to get to see, you know, any other women who are kind of taking a leadership role. Because I feel like it is hard being a woman on the show, but I don't think that the show has shown us that yet. Yeah. I don't think that they've shown us that they're, uh, there's a prejudice against the women and that they're not able to compete because every single time I feel like they're being chosen. I think it's whoever is the most uh, vocal and who has actually competed and shown that they can contribute a little something that's going. Yeah. So we'll see. So we will see. But that is It's Y'all for the Hero by uh, Dwayne Johnson, Sexy The Rock. And uh, your After Buzz host here, bringing you that great uh, spice, spicy Madi. You guys can play with my Twitter day and night at spicy underscore Madi or stroke my Instagram at spicy underscore Madi. And Phil, where can they find you? They can find me at After Buzz TV or on my Hilo that is waiting <laughs> for me right outside. Hilo. <laughs> That's what I'm about. I got to get me a Hilo. We got it. We, well, we got a few of those choppers in the back. A couple Hilos. <laughs> That's right. Thanks, guys. From Bing.com, executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, see you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.